I need it more than you do, I think. <laughs> so, here I am. Now, I guess you're uh, probably going to want to know a little bit about why, why me. But uh, the reason that I wanted to meet you is because we're a little concerned at this point about the fact that, you know, it's upstream being relayed through this relay point and that, you know, there may be some misduplication occurring on the ship. And uh, I want to get the straight scoop from you. I also, I bought this, this um, draft of the suit I don't want to go over that with you because there's some points in there that, well, I have a little concern about some of those, about how we're going to handle that. If we were to go ahead and bring that, how it would actually come off. But, you know, at certain, certain times, We really need to to uh, get the the real scene. You know what's really going on. So I'm gonna. I have a comrade to the rest of the guys. Joey doesn't have that, mm -hmm. so I can then be a more direct relay point because this has been going on now for some time. There's a lot of things I'd like to work out. I, I think it's going to go a lot easier. Uh, first of all, the, the complaint itself has not set in concrete. No, and no, I understand still, that. And, and a lot of issues keep keep coming up, which kind of broaden the whole thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I Last time I met with, uh, with Joey, it was with the girl. And uh, at that point, I was uh, basically given a go-ahead to um, locate an attorney. I don't know if you guys have an attorney. I don't know what the status of that is. However, um, when apparently the, the money fell through or whatever happened, I did not. I have the name of three attorneys, and I'd be willing to do that. Um, but that's, that's kind of the last thing I was left with. Right. In other words, my understanding is it's sort of up in the air, the whole thing is. And, and that's okay. I don't have any compulsion to do any of it. It's, but, you know, in my opinion, the organization is in a state of transformation, and it has to be altered. It is altering itself and it's doing it continually. We happen to be in a situation right now where, you know, something good can come out of it. That's philosophically where I stand on this thing. I don't want to continue on to legal battle against anyone for the next seven years. Well, that's exactly what our position is on that. I mean, that is really the common interest that we have with you. Everyone has, you know, the, the by, as an aside, that viewpoint is being assumed on the outside in great numbers. People oh, yeah? are suddenly real, beginning to realize that, you know, the thing, something is happening and a transformation has to take place. So what does everyone do in a situation like that? Right. But it is being picked up on the I had a call this morning from Martin Samuel. I had a call two days ago from Ben Gordon. All, all of whom, you know, are kind, kind of moving away from, from the, uh, well, we're just going to proceed with our lawsuit kind of a viewpoint. To the, you know, to the position that uh, something is happening and something can be done. So, what do Scientologists as a body want their organization to become? That's kind of uh, right. People are in a very unique position. It's never happened before in the history of the organization. Although, in a sense, the Miscavige takeover was similar. Right. Yeah. Similar. We've just got to get some people into positions that are more akin to the position that he was in. 
when he actually managed to pull that off. Yeah, I doubt that that's going to happen. Well, I, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It seems like he's, he's very firmly entrenched, but the degree of entrenchment could be his demise. That's very true. I mean, that's the, that to some degree is the basic premise of this too. Mm -hmm. You know, that entrenchment and the control over the organization is sort of what this is shooting for. Right. You, are you, you're familiar with the whole legal scene, you're legally... Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with the legal scene. Okay. Can I ask some questions? Yeah. I understand you have a couple of board members, CSC. Well, these people, I don't know, they're your people, but at least the people who think similarly. How many board members are there? Well, there is a president, and then there is the secretary, treasurer, and a dep, you know, an assistant treasurer. And then there, are, I believe that there are voting members as well. Oh, really? Yeah. It, for a board mi minute, to be an actual board minute, how many signatures do you need? You know, I actually don't know that. Can but you I, find I, that out? Yeah. The reason I, I ask out. is simply because, I, you know, all these legal concepts kind of come to me, and I'd really like to talk to an attorney, you know, on your behalf or, or whatever, because I think that there are, you know, the situation is so unique that the legal possibilities are unknown. For example, the board could simply vote to retain new counsel. And, and you know the way board minutes are circulated inside the organization. Right. They just type one up and everyone signs it. Then you got a board minute. So we just get someone to uh... Well, the, the board. The, CSC board are under control of someone else, obviously. Yeah, they're under the they're under control of CSI okay. to some degree because there is a some sort of a, an agreement that exists between CSI and all the other churches. Yeah, but what's that agreement? What is the agreement? Well, it's it's something in the area of an agreement to. Uh, it's like, you know, there is this licensing agreement that exists between RTC and then CSI. And then I believe that it goes down from like CSI down to the other churches, that licensing agreement. On the basis of good usage of the technology, they are allowed to continue to... CSC, a couple of years ago, was the whole thing. Right. CSC now is a relatively minuscule part of the whole thing. They probably lost SOR, correct? Well, it's not, I mean, CSC isn't that minuscule because it still, it still includes like AOLA, ASHO, oh, AOL, yeah. and those things. In fact, you have operating works. Right. Which is, see, I don't know the form this thing's going to take, but we don't have to get so stuck on, on the one complaint. I think it's a brilliant complaint. Uh, I think that you guys are in a position where you can make it happen. Right. In addition to that, there's also the concept of what if CSC suddenly said, we're CSC, we're getting new attorneys, we're firing our old attorneys, none of that, but we're going to sue them because they fucked us over and they made us divest all this shit which we didn't want to. And we're demanding um, SOR back and we're demanding all the organizations back. We're the mother church. So fuck you guys. You know, there's that kind of a thing which could be done from simply a part. You don't have to be the whole body of Scientology. You could do it corporately. And you know, take for example the agreement that you have with um, with CSI. That agreement certainly can be rescinded. Not only that, but you can find out the conditions under which the agreement was made, who signed the damn thing, and did they have any choice? They were the he they were the board at the time. There had to be a board at the time. Right. The board at the time had to have signed an agreement. Then they were all removed or kicked out or you know dismembered or whatever. But those people signed some agreement. And if you could simply find out from them, ah, oh, well, we were told signer, signer were dead, signer, you're kicked out. By who? Who can tell the board to sign something? Then you've got the, it's a open and shut case. There's so many of those possibilities. If you get in, remember the note I sent along to Julie a while ago? Kind of what, what happened during that transition from the 
you know, there's CSC, and CSC is kind of a front for the whole the whole thing. Hubbard controlled through CSC for so many years, correct? Well, I mean, he, see, then you get into the legalities of what is control. I mean, that's what's being litigated right now to a large extent. That's a whole different subject, you see, because you, you people are, in fact, the organization. Right, provided there's enough of it. See, that's one of the concerns that, that I had about this. I actually, we have uh, a line to an attorney. Mm -hmm. And I had this suit, had him look at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is not on the basis of, uh, of taking it on or anything, but just to, like, give us a little advice on it. And, like, one of the questions is, what what would be the standing of the plaintiffs in the first place? You know, like to say that that we're going to get together 20 people and say this is now the church. You know, this is CSC or CSI or whatever. There's like you know three, four, five hundred people in CSI and maybe 800 people in CSC. And I yeah. think yeah, yeah. And that could turn out to be a a real weak point in that. Yes, but they can't. They can't kick you out of the organ. They can't kick you out. See, if you say, well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm it. I'm just as much a part of it as you are. I mean, not to say that you're it and they're not. <clears throat> but, but I can't say that I'm the Church of Scientology. I made that, you know, I made that choice when I walked out the door. You guys haven't walked out, so you're in a completely different position. Yeah, but what, you know, See, the liability of this, the, the real liability of this suit to us is that it puts us out in the open. Now, obviously, at some point, we're going to have to go out in the open. But there is a liability to it in that unless this is strong enough to make it without crumbling under the first challenge, we're fucking dead, man. I mean, we're just dead. I mean, the first thing that will happen is if we bring the suit, we'll, we just get declared. Everybody whose name is on there as a plaintiff will just instantly get declared and expelled. Then we... That's the I don't know point. if there was that, a, That's when you get into, sorry, we're not moving. Well, there's a real... You know, then it becomes like a PR battle. It is a PR battle, which is why I mentioned in the last note. I hope you guys get these things. <laughs> well, see, that's one of the things that I don't know if everything that you've said has been relayed correctly. Yeah. Everything. You know, so and again, I, I, I am only a relay point in this thing. You know, however, I, I do make it, you know, my purpose to create as much shit as possible. You know, well, hence I, I have shit for the organization. Yeah, I do whatever I do. You, you know, because I, I have no... I'm not hooked into anything. Anyway, I mentioned that... A piece, you know, there are many PR, PR aspects to it. And the PR thing can be so well done that, you know, Scientologists, because they've had it drilled into them, you know, tend to believe they're believers. Right. If you, if you, anyway, that's why I mentioned get off policy action. Anything, any little detail you can find that, that the top has done off old accepted policy that they're doing off it now. You know, hidden data lines, use of PIs, anything you can find. Then you've got the organization behind it because they're off policy. And included in the lawsuit, include that they are not, they are not doing what's best for Scientology because they're violating the existing policies. They're, they're operating autonomously, and they're not operating for the best, for the good of the group. There's a lot of those things that have to be worked out to make the complaint very strong. And you know, no one has any idea if the thing will be pulled off. No one. You know, you can't, you can't tell. Five seconds from now, what's going to happen? And to have to have a, a, a sure thing, well, we can wait till the cows come home. You know? Uh, I, yeah, I got that point. I, it's going to take a Che Guevara. It's going to take some asshole to stand up and say, fuck, enough of this shit. You know, it's going to take that. Yeah, but they're going to have to be in a strong enough position prior to that to be able to stand up and get anybody to hear them. 
You see what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's like... You have anyone like that. See? Well, there's... You know, you know, there's two different positions. You know, there's... One is the public relations position, one's the organizational position. You may not be in an organizational position, but what kind of a position are the people going to be in if, if a whole shitload of them are indicted? Well, see, that's... not going to have a lot of... That's the thing. That's kind of... That's how that ties into this, because that would weaken the those people who are in those positions right now that have that authority to call a meeting of old stuff in Lebanon Hall and stand up there and say, listen, there's a bunch of assholes around here. You guys have the same possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. You know, it, 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 could, just, it could just be done. The whole, the, you know, the, it, just... You guys concentrated only on the CSC, on on the blue building. You divide the damn thing up and and just, you know, the day that the thing happens, you know, the day you file you file your complaint, then just call everyone and say there's a meeting. I don't know the positions of your people or if they're if they are in positions of strength. Accepted in the organization. Well, they're not all dishwashers. Obviously. But uh, you, you know, somewhere in between, right? But they're obviously not in ASI. Right. But they're, That's they're not in, the organization anyway. You know. Right. And not, but not only that, you're going to get people on your side. And how about if one of these days you, you know, let's say that at a given hour. A whole bunch of people were to pitch up on the doorstep. Where? Wherever you wanted them. Suddenly you've got numbers. Suddenly you've got a lot of people crowding into Lebanon Hall to hear, to hear lectures, to hear talks, to hear the announcements. And you may have numbers on your side. Right. Some of these, there are a lot of, a lot of people on the outside. And potentially the whole thing could be orchestrated. They could all be divided up into cells, and they could all be brought to one place at a given instant. Right. And it can be done during the chaos of whatever RTC ASI's got going on. Who runs the organization right now? Which organization? All of it. Who runs it? Well, it gets it gets run through CMON. And who, who are those people? Wow, they, you know, probably the same guys as when we were around. You know. A lot of them are gone. Yeah, quite a number of them, huh? I am. Sure, it's uh, 12.35. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll tell you, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Jerry. Uh -huh. I can see some potential. I can see some potential in this suit, and it's actually... One thing that I now see is the usefulness of talking to someone that's not stuck into yeah. it. Because you get kind of a whole exterior view and can look at things, which, you know, I tend to, I tend to self-doubt a little about, you know, how far we can go. Yeah. And I'm like... That's the way the mind works. Yeah, I know. And I, you know, I'm doubtful of my position, too. You know what I mean? Like, what have you got I don't to have, well, I have my life as a Scientologist mm -hmm. because I, I am still a Scientologist. That, that's not, I don't want to change that. But the, uh, okay, you I know. understand. Uh, I, I don't see how that, how that alters it in any way. Well, that just puts me in a little different position from you. Of course. Because that's, that is the threat of loss to me and to the other people that I'm right. involved with. I That's understand. our threat of loss. And that becomes, see, there's, a, there's like the ecclesiastical line, and then there's the legal secular line. And our threat of loss, see, they have to go sort of hand in hand. Yeah, that which brings us to another subject, which, you know, you have to make a very clear differentiation between those two things because they are absolutely different. The organization tends to lump them all together so that they can get away with their abuses and call them ecclesiastical rights or whatever. You know, like the hiring of the PIs, oh, that's just church doctrine bullshit. 
you know, you guys have to make a distinction and get it real straight about what the fuck is the organization, what the fuck is worth saving. Right. Because, I understand that. I mean, that has to be part of the lawsuit. Right. Because they're, they have twisted it and perverted it to the point where your organization stands a good chance of being smacked down so fucking hard it'll never rise again. Because people are going to get real pissed off because people are pissed off and they're going to get pissed off and PIs are going to step out of line and somebody's going to get killed and that'll be tipped up for Scientology as you've ever known it. It's going to come across as nothing better than fucking terrorism, which is basically what it is right now. You guys are terrorized. You can't even fucking walk out of the organization. Fucking frisks and TV monitors and all. Come on! Uh, all this. Somebody has to stand up and say enough of this bullshit. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to get fucking hurt. You know, you, you've got federal agencies that, you know, just about to come bring the hammer down. You guys, you guys wow. are assaulted from every quarter with, you know, with, with lawsuits. And they could all be bought off. They could all be bought off for, for you know, five cents in the dollar. Right. But no, but you know, it happens to be in the hands of a very few paranoid individuals, and they should be smacked down. Well, I'm a little paranoid too. If you know what I mean? I don't like, think you're you're not paranoid. You're you have a justifiable fear, and I recognize that. It yeah. creates fear. What the fuck kind of a church is it? Come on. It's, it's so ludicrous to anyone on the outside. Kind of fear, you know, an organization is it that, that just creates this incredible fear inside everyone in there. They're fucking scared to death. And they're, and they're, they're so suppressed that, that they haven't got a clue about the way the world really is down here. Not that I do either, you know. I'm not saying that I have a handle on, on anything. But I tell you, something's going to happen in that organization sooner or later, whether or not, you know, it's you guys or whether or not it's some wacko or whether or not, you know, somebody takes a shot at something. I don't know. Right. But I think that you are in a position where something can be done. And if you're, if they really are dedicated to, you know, saving the Scientology, well, you know, save Scientology, don't save the shit that's going on now. The Scientology sure as fuck is not that. Right. No, you know. That's true. You know, I, like it, I was sort of starting to say a little minute ago, you know, I'm going to be totally frank with you. I, ha I have this lawsuit and doing this, I have some concern that we are being set up. I have a concern that I'm being set up. Every time I talk to you guys, I have the same concern. So I kind of think, fuck, what's going to happen, you know? What's going to happen? What if you guys are setting me up? Just go to court sometime later. You know, that's how the courts are viewing all this shit now. Entrapment set up, lies. They're catching a beating everywhere they go. Because nobody, nobody believes Scientology anymore. No one, you talk about Scientology out there, bullshit. Unbelievable, they have no credibility. And they've got no credibility because they are a terrorist organization. You can't trust the terrorists. You never believe it. Anyway, yeah, you should. You should have a lot of concerns about it. Uh, you know, frankly, I don't think it matters a damn. It really, honestly, doesn't matter a damn if you guys file or not. Or if you do anything. Or if you all go, go back and just continue on. None of that matters. What well, does matter? There you get into some very deep philosophic questions, which I don't think could be answered at this point. But I'm saying that doesn't matter. You know, it, it, I think it would be real fucking exciting. I think that you guys sit in a situation where, fuck, you can sure get out of the boredom of Scientology for a couple of days. Isn't it a boring thing? Well, it's not so boring when I'm doing this oh, shit. Oh, shit, it's fucking boring. Jesus, Scientology is so fucking... I mean, not really the... You know, the Scientology, but it's a pure thing, you know. Everyone in there was just any news, the least fucking news adrenaline addicts gotta have their fucking data and you know the latest skinny in the news. But I, I don't 
I don't think it matters. It would be great. I think, you know, it would be real exciting and, and in a sense I, you know, I wish I was there. Because that, Jesus Christ, I think it's just a fucking, it, it's exciting. And uh, you guys could be in a position of doing a, a great deal of good. But, you know, the world is not going to be fucking good. Well, my world will be. In a sense. I mean, in a real sense, world, I mean, you, whatever you make I, it. Well, yeah, but it, my world revolves around Scientology. I mean, that's the way I am, and that's the way I'm going to stay. And you know, you start talking about, wow, it's going to be wiped out and rack rack, and you know, I don't know that's, that that's not something that I, that I want. And you know, you, we keep getting stuff back from Joey. You say, you know, the, the indictments are going to be coming down, all this sort of shit, and it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that stuff. You know, I don't know either. But what I do know is that the thing cannot remain status quo. It cannot. And it won't. I don't know how... I don't know what's going to happen. No one does. And that's why the fact that we don't know what's going to happen puts us in a, in a position of being able to do something because we're not hooked into the way it is. So what can we do to make something happen? You guys... can do basically whatever you want. But we gotta survive that too. Whatever we do, we gotta survive. Well, you'll survive. I mean, there's no, no doubt of that. Whether or not, you know, it turns out the way you hope, who knows? I mean, I, who has any expectations? You know, the only thing you get when you get an expectation is an upset because no expectation ever happened. You know, no girl you ever went out with ended up exactly the way you thought she was at the beginning. That, that's the whole thing about expectations. And when you kind of move away from expectations, then whatever happens, you can live with. Right. You know, you well, we have Well, we have an expectation, regardless of anything else, we have an expectation that isn't going to go away, that we are still going to be able to be Scientologists. We have no interest in that. You guys have more hope of being Scientologists if, if you do this. If you, if you stand up and say, I am a Scientologist and I don't want the friggin' organization, you know, to become this, this kind of a, of a paranoid operation. That's silly. And to think that there are government agencies against you is also a lot of bullshit. I have talked to probably 20, 30 people in various places in the government in the last couple of years. I have not found one had any problem with Scientology, any vendetta, any desire to stop Scientology, or any desire to hurt any Scientologist. Not one. That's, that's the lie that's perpetrated on the inside. Well, you know, but I've seen some stuff that says otherwise to that. What? I saw, I saw this transcript of a meeting, you know one of those bug meetings that they fucking did back in 74? Yeah. I saw a transcript of a fucking meeting between some guys in the IRS, I, Tedesco, Rump, I think, I think that's what their names were, and they, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Jerry, that the whole tone of that meeting was not, was nothing other than what they really want to do is wipe out the church. I, I'm, I mean, that is an area that, that I am a little paranoid in. I mean, I, that's great that you tell me that, but... What exactly did they want to wipe out? Well, the basic statement in there was, some, you know, something on the order of, you know, just handling the tax exempt point isn't enough. That's, that's the way it is. So that, I mean, is that what their view is? Well, what else is it that they want to handle? From the IRS view, I don't know. They want to handle the same stuff you guys want to handle. I don't understand what their motive is for that. I don't understand what, you, why. Well, that, their, as far as I know, is, their interest is, is in collecting taxes, you know? That's true. However, if there is an, an illegal control of a charitable corporation, which is used for illegal means, and if there is money inuring on a grand scale to an individual, then it becomes a different matter. And not only that, but if, if you look and, and see how many people have been hurt, 
then it fast moves down to the realm of a charitable organization. There's no charity in Scientology. Scientology Corporation exists as it is now only as a tool of the very small group at the top. They use it as a tool. They keep enemies at bay, and they uh, are able to wield a lot of power over a lot of people. And the people who got to the top were those who wanted a great deal of power, and they were willing to, to be ruthless to get there, and they're equally ruthless keeping that power. That's what the, you know, again, these people haven't said anything to me. They're after Miscavige and they're after and they're after Hubbard. And they should be, because Hubbard ripped off a lot of people. He fucking lied to us. While he was telling us that he wasn't making any money, he was making millions. Fucking crooked. Anyone who opposed him, anyone who sought to have conditions bettered was smacked down. While all the time he was lying about his control. Oh yeah, he retired in 1966. Oh shit. Okay. And, I, I, yeah, yeah, I. That, you know, that's just the way it is. But one. The guy got greedy. He, he had some brilliant ideas. He got greedy. All right. That's it.